Hi, dear reader. Uh, this is Harriman, and I am coming with you, coming at you, <laughs> with another installment of stories my kids are tired of hearing. This is kind of a low energy, mellow installment today because I'm kind of down. I'm going through something and um, just very sad. But that's okay. It's not, it's certainly not your fault. And so um, I am just going to tell you about how we are so much closer to the past than we think we are. You know, we're so, and, and I'm guilty of this too, you know, I'm so tied into my phone um, and, um, and I spend all day in front of the computer. And so, you know, we're all very guilty of, um, you know, just really thinking about everything being modern and progress and whatnot. And yet we don't realize how close we really are to the future. Oh, you know what? Before I go on, I should probably, this is my t-shirt. And this is Choupette, the probably the world's most famous Burman. My Picasso, uh, Picasso my little white cat, is a Burman. And uh, Choupette was Carl Lagerfeld and he was alive. That was his beloved um, Burman. In case you're wondering what I'm wearing here. So, um, so let's talk about how we are much more connected and we're closer to the past than we think. Um, I remember, first of all, going to Connor Prairie, this has been, you know, quite some years ago, um, but Connor Prairie is a little north of Indianapolis, and it sets out to recreate a pioneer settlement of the uh, 19th century. So you get to see how people, you know, farmers lived way back in the day. And so I was there with my dad and my mom and my sister. And my dad grew up on a farm. My dad's 80. Yeah, he's 80. And he, Alexa, stop. <sighs> Sorry about that. And, um... I was really surprised because as we walked around the farm they had there, there were parts of plows, there were uh, different farming implements, and they were, you know, they were just about, they were basically sculpture to me. I mean, they didn't mean anything to me. I mean, I, I, I mean, I had no idea what this, what the, these, you know, this hulking, uh, pile of rust everywhere what they meant but to my dad every one of these had meaning uh, he was able to tell me oh this was for threshing and oh I remember sitting up on the uh, up on the tractor and you know um, and, and I remember doing this and that and this is how you use this and this is how you use that and so I was really intrigued because to me, when I think of something from way back in the day, the 19th century, I think of that as being, when I think of the, eight, the 19th century, I think of it as being like, just, oh, it might as well be another planet, a world completely separated from the one I'm inhabiting. And so, um... Um, and so I, I thought that was really interesting how I was connected to the 19th century through my father, though I didn't even realize it. Um, so that was interesting. But a story I was telling my son, Jacob, was about how um, my, when I was a little girl, my mom, my dad, and my sister and I would all go to visit uh, Mary Margaret Orth was her name. She was my godmother. And 
she would, um, and, and they lived in a shotgun house. And in the Midwest, a shotgun house is a house. You can stand at the front door. You, in theory, don't try this at home. You could shoot a rifle all, all the way through the front door and it would come out the back door. Hence, a shotgun house. And that's what it was. Very, very, very common type of house in the Midwest. And so we went to visit Mary Margaret, and she lived with her mom and her dad. The second room of the house, we would generally sit in the first room, and the second room was kind of like a kitchen. And it was lined with black and white photographs of people in their coffins. Now, uh, taking pictures of people in their coffins was a Victorian custom. It was not considered unusual, like, you know, to us, we're thinking, oh my gosh, that's so morbid, ew, you know, gross, or that kind of thing. But to them, it was, um, you know, you have to understand, around the turn of the last century, the average lifespan uh, was 45. And uh, infant mortality was was you know super high i mean you could have it was completely possible to have five kids and none of them would survive and two, so i was telling my son jake about all this and he said oh well he said you know what then mary margaret's mom and dad we were talking about timelines and and everything and he said oh mary margaret's dad must have or his mom or her, and her mom must have been born in the 1800s and I confirmed this with my parents he said yeah they were born in like the 1890s so here I was I met people who were born in the 19th century in the night in the uh in the 1800s and and I and I had to think about it I thought well you know when I was a little girl in 1968 Sorry, it, it's got to sound like a disco in here with all the notifications going off. See, that's how it's completely, like, not with it I am here today. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Um, and so, um, and I had to think about it. I was like, well, you know, since I was born in 68, 1968, um, well, gosh, when I was a girl, I mean, when I was a little girl, like, you know, I had to have known people in their 70s who'd been born in the 1900s, I mean, the 1800s, maybe. And so I found it interesting that our lives entwined with theirs so easily. And most of you are Gen Z folks. Um, but for those of you who know people who were born in the 1900s, before the year 2000, um, those people are now officially an endangered species. Um, heck yeah. I mean, they may be the majority of people walking around right now, but as time goes on, you know, you'll tell your kids if you choose to have them. Um, oh yeah, I knew such and such. They were born in 1900. Oh yeah, such and such was born in 1900. You know, that will become the new metric for you guys. So I just wanted to talk about how we are so much closer to the past than we thought. And indeed, I read, this is the year 2020 that I'm recording this. And um, the last person to get a Civil War era pension, survivor's benefit, just died. So, so that's what I've got for you today. Um, I just picture time in a sense when we talk about the human experience of time. Time is like a river and we're all part of it and we're all connected to each other 